Oh boy! A set with an archetype only I'll play? Oh, this deck looks interesting. Oh, they're almost all yours. The one archetype seeing success in the OCG. That's really funny. <clears throat> How many yours can you get in a box? Oh, right. How much does a box cost? Ah, it's no secret that side sets have a tendency to be less than stellar products. This isn't a new phenomenon, but it feels like Konami's doing their absolute best to make these products as undesirable as possible. They might as well officially call them tax write-off sets. No one is buying these. Each set has 10 different URs, and you only get 3 per box. Even if URs were evenly distributed between the three archetypes, we'd still have a 3-4-3 three, three ratio. <sighs> With a ratio like this, there's still going to be three URs that you need three copies of. If you're just built different and get all the said URs in the fewest amount of boxes possible, that's still three boxes. Over 180 bucks to build a deck. Why would anyone ever open product over buying singles? Oh, but it's okay. Because Konami identifies the most desired archetype in the set and makes all their cards URs. Those greedy little lemmings in their singles. Make them pay. Wild Survivors had Novelle, Transcendosaurus, and the highly anticipated Vanquish Soul. Konami then proceeded to use seven of the ten UR slots on Vanquish Soul. I was hyping up the set to a friend because Vanquish Soul seemed like a fun competitive deck, and even the other two seemed like they were fun to play with. Then when the rarities were revealed, uh, we both agreed it wasn't worth it. And the vast majority of the player base also reached that conclusion. This sabotaged Vanquish Soul's player rate, even with it being considered a competitive contender. Even if it wasn't THE top deck, I guarantee you it would have seen far more play, were people able to actually afford it. This set was controversial for this reason. Surely they wouldn't do this AGAIN! Ah, five instead of seven this time. How generous of you, Tommy Konami! Valmonica chats thriving while Centurion sells fucking Seath. What the fuck? Also, why the hell did you give us Angel of Zera? Uh, uh, you know what? I, I, I think uh, this card uh, might have been more important to reprint. Just, just, just a thought. Konami has to give us the OCG structure for deck build sets if they want these products to ever get off store shelves. Being able to get the cards in multiple different rarities, making it easier to find play sets of the cards, and get this, BUILD THE DECK in the sets that are directly called Deck Build. Oh wait, not in English. Boxes in the OCG cost a little under 3,000 yen. That comes out to around 20 USD. You could absolutely build all three decks, spending half of what you'd need to get one in the TCG. You can't remove the Deck Build moniker, shift rarities, call it a side set, and expect people to buy it. We are actively being scammed, and Konami thinks they can just do that with these sets. These sets could appeal to getting more newer, casual players into the competitive scene, but Konami insists on making these decks hard to build. With something like Sinful Spoils, I go, Oh cool, I want to try this deck. Then Konami says, Kill yourself, respect, and make them all unattainable. Do you want people with a casual interest to even play these cards? Like, sure, maybe you can justify it to yourself, it's a meta shaping engine, you pay for the price of admission. But I shouldn't be forced to spend over 300 bucks on a deck that gets curb stomped by Oliver Twist My Fucking Nutsack! I bought a box of Synchro Storm for 20 bucks. The set is god awful, but for 20 bucks, I got two nearly complete decks, one of which was playable, and a sliver of a chance to pull Barone. The thing is, didn't retail at 20 bucks because it was shit. Vendors have to eventually lowball these sets because no one is buying this shit otherwise. How much money are you making vendors lose just for a tax write off? This is all not even mentioning sets like Tactical Masters and Amazing Defenders. Sets no one wanted to buy because the product is bad, then some featured archetypes became meta relevant. This made it so boxes didn't drop in price, and rather, the singles just spiked in price instead. Even when a set retroactively becomes good, it's still unappealing for players to dig through. This practice isn't good for anyone involved. If sets like Wild Survivors and Valiant Smashers retailed at OCG price, 
people would tear through these. Well, well, maybe not Valiant Smashers because that was just bad timing all around. I guarantee you would actually sell product. I know this because I would buy it. And that's one more person than the Zero currently buying. Price point alone won't fix the core issue at hand, though. So, what else needs to be done? Well, for starters, you could set up side events at YCSs and locals where participants get boxes of the latest deck build set and run a tournament with their pools. Make the participation fee just be the pay for the boxes. You could even make this fee cheaper than if you'd bought the boxes normally. If managing a draft system sounds too hard to well, well, you can just run a tournament where the set's card list is the card pool. This gives OTS stores a product they can actually sell. With a consistent and accessible format predicated on a single product, people will have a reason to open the specific product. With prices of boxes functionally being discounted as entry fees, this in turn gets more people talking about the set and playing with the cards. Even if the set's cards aren't necessarily viable in the main game, you've easily created a format where these cards actually have personal value to players. Dare I say, make people want to buy and play with the product. It's also no secret that these archetypes tend to get support later down the line. If these formats get more people interested in specific decks, they'll naturally be interested in future support they receive. With the draft format in mind, this also establishes a great excuse to reprint older cards that work well with the featured archetypes. STOP FUCKING PRINTING THIS CARD! Maybe have a greater focus on cards that are popular in Time Wizard formats, which in turn makes them prime picks to have premium rarity versions for. With premium rarities, this may just be me, but collector's rares aren't exactly the most swordjack point inducing rarity to me. And honestly, I'd want them to add another premium rarity like Ghost in order to make the sets more exciting to pull from. To avoid premium rarity stacking, just don't fucking stack them. With much better reprints and collector pools in these sets, there's much more reason to get the product. Much like a master duel ban list, killing multiple birds with one card list. Speaking of Master Duel, after the shareholders meeting, Konami has to be more cognizant of actual player retention. Anybody can pick up Master Duel and learn, <coughs> with a thousand external learning resources of course, but then you can just play the game. Of course, this meeting was only referring to the OCG, and they generally have it better than us for product. That's why I think making official events for these deck build sets would make the barrier to entry a lot lower for paper play, TCG and OCG alike. It is a full-time job to take competitive play remotely serious. There are so many minor intricacies and mechanical nuances that it'll take forever to actually learn and retain this information. This is exacerbated by new decks constantly cycling in and out of play, requiring players to constantly learn how to play with and or against them. If you tell new players there's a format where all they have to do is learn everything in that box, you make an easy pick up and play format that appeals to newcomers, casuals, and regulars alike, which can eventually turn into more lasting play <coughs> customers. Now, you may be thinking, that's what the Speed Duel sets are for. And that's the problem. The Speed Duel boxes are not going to retain players. Speed Duel is a format almost no one is playing, leaving it realistically to be something you do with friends once. It's not remotely indicative of what players will experience in modern Yu-Gi-Oh at all, so it doesn't even work as a way to ease people into modern. People say Konami should make Blue Eyes and Dark Magician meta decks because that's what will keep the anime fans playing, and I think that's an outright detrimental mindset. If we keep trying to sell anime fans that they can recreate the anime, they'll never play the actual game. They'll never experience an anime moment of their own. They need the come to god moment, the realization that the game is fun. Not White Woman Dragon, not the Violet Virgin, not Red Eyes Gooner Dragon, it's what you're able to accomplish with your cards that makes you feel like you're in the anime. And I think this structure to the deck build packs will help foster that appreciation for modern Yu-Gi-Oh! As opposed to the effects of constantly chasing the past. A personal anecdote. In month one of Master Duel, I was playing a horrible dragon made list. Playing like a complete Neanderthal against Unchain. My opponent makes Link BLS, my back is to the wall, and I don't know if I can even win anymore. After looking through my extra deck and thinking for a minute, the music begins to swell, and I see the line. With my limited resources, I have to make Borogard and Cross Sheep because they're the only remaining links in my extra. Cross Sheep's effect for Fusion Monster, Revive Nurse, Nurse effect, 
link them all off for Borogard. The music reaches a crescendo as I link the two off to summon Ningirsu. Ningirsu's effect removes BLS, and I win! From this duel alone, Ningirsu became one of my favorite links, entirely off sentimental value. It is moments like this that keep me playing the game. To win the seemingly unwinnable, this is what the anime was about. I only wish more people played the game to realize that. I'm certain these theoretical side events would bring about the same love for cards in many players and keep them playing the game as well. If players fall in love with the featured decks, they're more likely to buy more products that release support for them. Then they can take it to the actual game. And even if they don't, if players like this <coughs> rotating format, uh, that's still product people are actively buying and playing with. To sum it up, Konami has to make products to be more appealing in general. The Rarity Collection is probably the best product we've ever gotten, and while obviously not every set can be on the same level as that, Konami should be reevaluating just every aspect of this set and studying what makes this set so beloved. I personally had to talk myself out of getting a second box, because I need a box of Age of Overlord more than another Rarity Collection box. However, I failed! The set's so fun to open, I know I'll most likely get what I want from the set, and the premium rarity pools will have personal value to me, even if they aren't the best ones. It's way more fun to open product than buying singles. Konami just has to make buying product more appealing than picking up singles. So in conclusion, I've not said anything bad about Konami or their products, nor have I ever. So please... Let me do a 144p creator reveal of Penguin Sport that revolves around Pendulum summoning face down. PLEASE!